Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, Steve has an outstanding newsletter, folks, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see Mastering Probability right under Featured Content. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95 which is a savings of $199 at 22%, and you get it for one year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593.33. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So let's say you go with six months. Bottom line, you like the newsletter, great, you keep it, you get a great deal, you save $199. For some reason, 29th day, it doesn't work for you, guess what? You can just get a refund flat out. You get the whole thing, you're off to the races. Steve has an amazing newsletter. Huge amount of technical information on it each and every trading day to guide you through this dynamite market. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Hockey, hockey. Game I know, three. man. And, I, and tickets, tickets are reasonably priced. So my wife's going out with the girls tonight, so I may just go down there. That's awesome. And particularly... I, the same, the same kid, same guy actually got the got the goal, which is amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they've been they've been great games. Uh, all all the games have really been pretty good, pretty solid. Yes. So it was a, you know great great weekend uh, for for uh, for hockey. It's going to be a great evening for hockey. And, and how about I don't know if you caught the PGA Championship. I did. Kepka. But you know yep. the weather, the weather. They saw all four seasons. It seemed like, <laughs> I mean, the torrential rain There's, on Saturday. That was and amazing, the, wasn't it? And cold, and how cold. Right. You know. Right. Yeah, totally. But but the shot, the shot, the, the this guy Michael Block, I think that's his name. Yes. The, uh, the, the pro, he, he's a teaching pro, a public public uh, golf course, I believe, the whole thing out in right. California, and and getting that hole in one on number sixteen. He got what, a hole. I just, didn't see that. Oh, I'm so happy oh. for him. Because they, folks, they were making this. That is such a great story, Steve. I didn't know that. Oh, that is yes. so great. Uh, and and Tom, it, it it left his club and it went directly into the hole. Never hit, never hit anything other than the actual hole. Really? Which is pretty, yeah. Which is pretty amazing. Oh my God. Unto itself. But he needed that shot in order to drop two more shots to get him into the qualifying spot, so that he's automatically invited back to the PGA Championship uh, next uh, year. Was, uh, but I think he's going to get a bunch of other invites. I mean, it, it was such a Cinderella story. It was such a good feel-good story. And then when he gets that ace... No, totally. Was, because, now, he was he was with Rory, right? He was. He the was same guy. Rory. Okay, because yeah. the first... What happened, folks, is that he got a bogey on the first one. And I really didn't know Michael Block, but the crowd was with him. And just as oh, you said, um, it, it's big one time. of these deals, folks, that he's a pro at a public course and, you know... And, yeah, we all want but him, you right. had the dynamic, the dynamic going on where you've got between the Live Tour guys and yes. the PGA Tour guys, right? So you got that fight, and then you've got just these PGA teaching professionals. Right. Who's out there who was, you know, basically finished in 15th spot. He wasn't that I, far away. I, I mean, love he was, it. He was far enough away from, from Brooks Kepka's uh, final yeah, score, but right. still, still, it was it was beautiful. It was it was to, for me. It was just uh, what, what it's you know I I use on the show. I say everything happens for us, not to yes, us. Right. That hole in one. It was another one of those happening for you wow. kind of um, of a moment, right? I so, love it. What I thought we'd do with the, with just the remaining time here is I thought that what I would do is I would start with a blank chart okay and just and just show folks the tools that I use to help me uh, really narrate the chart so when I do the show from one to two I'm really just narrating what the charts are communicating to us based upon these tools out here so let's let's get into it the first step that I use to analyze any stock chart when I'm taking a look at it is understanding where support and resistance are so one tool that I use are the TAS market profiles. The top of a profile, so folks, if you're looking, watching this on Tiger TV, you'll see black dashed lines on this chart out here. The top of a profile is resistance, the, and that's where sellers are located. The bottom is where buyers are located, otherwise known as support. And the center is really where both buyers and sellers really believe there's fair, fair value with inside that range out there. So it's kind of yes. the center point. Um, so if we take a look at... Um, if we take a well, how did I get there so quick? If we take a look at where Apple is trading right now, it's trading above the top of a profile. It is trading above resistance. That's just one thing. If you're analyzing the stock chart for Apple, the one thing you note is price is trading above resistance and support is 170.92. We've seen price uh, uh, for Apple above that level. It pulled back four days ago, tested and rejected it. So it's a strong level of support out there. 
Another tool that I use to identify support or resistance are what I refer to as TD9 count uh, breakout levels or TD9 count uh, support areas. And those are these uh, red and green lines that are on this chart. The red line becomes support, the green line becomes resistance. Well, the last green line that was out here was at 153. Price is above that, so we know that price is above TD9 count breakdown resistance. We can go all the way over on the left-hand side of the chart and see another breakdown area at 173.74. At least at the time of posting this chart, price was above that. So we can say price is above two resistance levels that Stevie uses to identify support or resistance. Now, the next step that I take is I look for a top or bottom signal. So I've identified support and resistance, but are there, are there top and bottom signals? And one of those tools is the TD9 count pattern. So if we go back to this TD9 count that helped us identify support or resistance, if we take a look at the counts that are on here, now I'm not explaining to everybody the counts and how this works, but the last top that was formed out here inside of Apple was a TD9 count top. It can form on the bar following bar number nine or can form bars eight, nine, bars eight, nine to the bar following nine. If we take a look at the bottom that formed in Apple, it was a TD9 count pattern. So at present, we can say, hey, guess what? There's no TD9 count pattern, so Apple should continue to move higher based upon that set of, that tool. Now, subscribers have access to this one-hour uh, workshop on, on the TD9 count system. It's called Tom DeMarc uh, Setup 9 Count and the Advanced Client Oscillator. So that's available to subscribers. The next top or bottom signal, Tom, that I look for is the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. And the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal shows up on the charts that we take a look at with black diagonal lines already drawn. So there's nothing that I'm drawing in here. It's just following my set of patterns, which is looking for price moving higher with less weakness or less strength and price moving lower with less weakness out there. And subscribers have access to two Mastering Probability Workshops, the ultimate reversal patterns and how to spot and avoid the next bear market. The Rose Momentum Indicator signal has been present before every single bear market in the Dow. So just because a line is drawn, though, doesn't mean that it's a top or a bottom. Instead, what we use are Japanese candlesticks. And here are the Japanese candlesticks on the chart of Apple. If we take a look at what's transpired so far today, it's a gap to the downside, also referred to as a falling window. That is a bearish Japanese candlestick pattern. Well, if we go back and take a look at the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal, we can see with this gap down, that is, how, that is what I use are Japanese candlesticks to confirm tops or bottoms. So in this case here, Apple has confirmed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. What does that mean? Well, first, if you want to learn that pattern, there's a workshop called the Ultimate Trading Signals. So just sign up for Mastering Probability. Said try for 30 days. You'll get access to this. As mentioned, Apple's confirming that top today. Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal triggered. And what we've got is this gap to the downside. That should take price back to support. We're back to understanding where was support and resistance. Apple should move back to 170.92. And folks, you can see it's so easy to get Steve's newsletter. And Steve just went through four archives, four full workshops, okay, that you get with his newsletter. And as again, it's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So the bottom line, get over to the website of TFN, go into featured content, hit Master in Probability, and let's get teaching and let's get learning. You know, like uh, Shawshank Redemption. Let's get living there you on. Go. Yeah, I love it. totally, I love man. It. I love Steve, it. have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Look forward to show tomorrow. You too, Tom. Thank Take you. Care. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.